Hey guys, so um, this is a uh, weird point of view video I'm just making uh, to share a little bit of information for everyone's interest about the Immersion RC Tramp and there it is isn't it lovely? Unfortunately uh, we had 200 of these for the Drone Nationals event and they didn't, uh, well they did arrive in time but this, these things did not sadly arrive in time uh, for the event so we were unable to use them as designed in um, in race mode. So I just thought I'd have a little play tonight before I have to send them back. Um, this is the VTX itself and as you can see it's very little and uh, it has simple wiring harness, uh, one five pin connector that goes to the camera and to power. Um, they also come supplied with a regular five pin, six pin, six pin um, power connector and uh, that's for uh, doing Got audio, telemetry, video, 5 volts, ground, and something else. Plus, I don't know. Ah, power in. Yes, power in. As you can tell, I am full of energy tonight after running the event or helping run the event all weekend. So you'll just have to deal with my high energy levels. Right, so uh, what's this little guy? This little guy is the NFC pad, which uh, is the thing that the wands connect to. So the idea is you mount this guy inside your quad, and you mount this guy on the outside somewhere, where the um, pit marshal can get to it with the uh, wand, and zap it before you race. Um, there's a little button on here, which I did press randomly and managed to change the frequency. However, to get the full benefit of programming, you need to use the wands. So this is the wand in its little case. Um, I'll be sending it back to uh, Sander with this attached to it, of course. Um, and it was a little bit annoying to use, and plus I wanted to have a look at the inside of it. So here is the one decased. These may not be the final version, of course. These are prototypes. And a probably top secret, but hey, what the hell. I shouldn't have sent it to me if they didn't want me to share it with everyone, right? So, let's power up the VTX and have a look over here. We should get a picture. Yay. We've got a picture in there of the workbench, basically. That's the camera that that's hooked up to. And uh, that's currently set to... Uh, race band 3 or 4. So in order to find out, you can count the little flashes of the light. If you don't have the NFC pad connected, it'll behave slightly differently. And uh, if you want to use the wand, let's switch it on. There it goes. Hello. Uh, you got a couple of menus. You appear to be in racing mode. Let's go through the menu. So, read frequency. That's a good place to start. Read the frequency, just touch it on there. Press the button. And look at that. You have got the frequency saying it's on 5769, which is like race band something. And um, it's on 25 milliwatts. It is not locked to race mode at the moment. So, I can do a few things in here. Enter race mode is the one we want. Put it in race mode now. And you'll notice this picture's gone off. It's flashing its little red light there. So it's in pit mode at the moment, um, which is 5584 megahertz and 2 milliwatts, according to this. So basically you could have that powered up and you wouldn't interfere with anyone who was racing. Um, I'm no expert at this, but I'm going to go set up heat, 
Let's go, yeah, pilot four, he's on race band four, 25 milliwatts. Um, so all that you'd have to do, so I've told it how many pilots there are. Um, there's only four, so it's using four race bands. And on 25 milliwatts, I've, uh, if you go set up race, that's where you change this. So you can change the number of pilots, you can enable or disable pit mode, and so on. Just makes it quick to go through. Uh, you can also select the frequency for pit mode, uh, which can go down as low as 5362 MHz, which is way out of the ISM band, but it's only 2 milliwatts, so hey. Um, oh, you can configure pit mode to be 225, 50, 75, so you can change the power. I don't know if you can see that, but it's going up in increments of 25 milliwatts each time, all the way from 2 to 600, which is pretty cool. You can set pit mode to be any channel you like, which is also cool. So if you don't have a specially um, configured um, duo for receiver, then you can just assign a channel as pit channel and use that, I'm assuming. So this is where you configure the race, pilot 1 and 2. You can change their power. So we'll make everyone run on 100 milliwatts this time around. Okay. Uh, what just happened there? I see. Right. So you basically preset what you want all of you guys to use. And then just go set up heat. Okay, bang. Part number one comes along. And he doesn't have to be powered up, by the way. Um, you can have him unpowered. You can still flash this. That's done. Part number two, flash. Part number three, flash him. And finally, pilot number four. Oops. So that's the whole heat completed. Oh, it switches itself off. So this guy now is ready to power up for the heat. And if I plug him in, should be on race band four, which appears in there. There it goes. Hello. You can see my hand. And then he does his race. Zoom, 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 zoom. I'm very happy I won. And then he powers down. Power back up again. And we're back in pit mode. So, ready for the next race. And so on. So that's basically it. Um, I don't want to be in race mode anymore. So I will... So you can actually read the frequencies again. See what he's set to. Race mode, yes. Pit mode, pit band is there, race is there, normal is there. So, um, yep, what we'll do is we'll, no, that won't work, that'll make a beep noise, that'll fart at me. Leave race. So we leave race mode at the end of our fun weekend of racing. Bye now. And that's out of race mode, so the next time I power that up, it'll just go back to whatever it was set to, which was our Good old trusty uh, race band number four, which is what we used. So that's about it. Um, there's a few other things here. Read statistics. Uh, that's more internal type stuff. I've basically taught myself how to use this as I've been talking to you. So it's pretty easy to use. Um, the VTX itself has one of these UFL connectors on it. I'm not a massive fan of those, but if you mount this thing with strain relief, then it should be reasonably durable, and hey, if it's good enough for TBS, it must be good enough, right? You can wipe the touch and read uh, chip. Right. That's just to write your normal frequency. 
So I happen to like Immersion Channel 3, that's Channel Mark. And I happen to like blasting everyone at 600 milliwatts. So that's what I'm going to program this with now. Boom. Done. And uh, that's Immersion 3 now. Previously it was on Race Band 3, but uh, the head players don't really seem to care that much. They'll drift 10 megahertz or so. So that's about it. Hope that was informative. I don't know if I'll even publish this, but if I do, yay. If I don't, it's uh, just for you guys. Aren't you privileged? Enjoy. Bye now.